Welcome back to Ill Eagle Culture Brands Talk. I am your host, John Nostos, a.k.a. Ill Eagle CEO. And I'm here with my two counterparts, Dion, Two Cup Larry. I just got one cup today. <laughs> one cup Larry. And Cody Big Meat Malk. And as usual, if Dion's on this side, it means we have a guest in the house today. And today we have the act- the, the first actual name on our show, yeah. <laughs> Sheriff Jesse Johnner. There Welcome we to the show, brother. Hey, thanks for having me on. Man, thanks for gracing it. us, man. I, I appreciate you being here. I know you're there a busy man. and uh, Very busy. You take life pretty serious with, with your job, and we just bullshit on here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah we're no, gracious to you. I, I appreciate you guys getting me on. And um, Cody reached out to me a while ago, and it uh, took a little while to get it arranged. But, yeah, I'm happy yeah. to be here. Well, I, I, I just got to start out by saying we three – have a tremendous amount of respect for you and Absolutely. Uh, the law enforcement community as a whole. Um, I have a little bit of experience with like dealing with like the public and being in the military. I worked security at windbreak. I had to deal with drunk people, which you have to do a lot too. And then uh, during COVID, we ran those COVID testing sites. So you had to deal with the public every single day doing that. And just that little tiny bit that I had to do that, like, that's even more respect that I have for you guys <laughs> yeah. because like dealing with Karen's is another level, dude. Sure. No. And I, I, I really enjoy working with the public. I mean, that's one of my favorite parts of the job. And oh, yeah. I was, you know, we were earlier, we were talking and, and, um, that's what I really like about the, sh- the sheriff's position is that, um, I work directly for the people of Cass County. And so, uh, my interaction with the, with the public, with our community really gives me an opportunity to see how we're doing. As far as the sheriff's office is concerned, you know, what they like, what they don't like, what they'd like to see more of and how we can better serve them. So, um, you know, for me, it it works out great, but most certainly what you do and, and uh, being in the military, I certainly appreciate your service to to the country and the community. And, um, yeah. Yeah. When you actually work. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) And what do you say? He was done for a couple months. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's easy cruising now. Yeah. I'm technically, I'm supposed to have just Fridays off, but that hasn't occurred yet. So you hit your mark. I hit my mark, but I've been doing stuff every Friday since now. So I don't know if I'll ever get a Friday off. I have no idea. Well, I I heard guys are trying to take your spot as a military in our gym. So. Yeah, that's there's, there's some new boys. That's a in problem. Town. That's yeah. a problem. They showed up They're at, at HQ gym today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a great recruiting tool. Yeah. Uh, you know, oftentimes I see you in the gym working out with some of these guys with yeah. your with your uh, guard group and stuff. And yeah, I think that's that's a good way to draw young people in. Yeah, show um you know show how your group is is uh you know kind of that brotherhood and mm-hmm. you guys get to hang out and do do fun things besides work stuff. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so um. I just want to start out with um, actually going back all the way to like, I don't know, 2013, 2014 area and get your opinion from it. So <clears throat> the start of like this anti-cop rhetoric, I guess, would have, would have started with President Obama at the time. Um, I think it was around 2014 was when um, I kind of started hearing more and more of the, you know, like cops are bad stuff, I guess. Do you remember, like, during that time period, if if the feeling was kind of shifted? Wait, were you a cop in that time period, Sam? Yeah, so okay. I actually started at the sheriff's office in 98. So, oh, wow. Okay. So I've been totally. there for quite a while. So um, that that's a good point because over my time in law enforcement, I've been law enforcement and the public's perspective, it goes up and down, right? Oh, um, sure. You know, you, you just now in our community, we've got tremendous support with the, with the unfortunate uh, incident involving Officer Jake Lawleen. Mm-hmm. Most certainly, uh, we, we've seen a, a tremendous outpouring from our community here and support. And so, um, unfortunately, it takes sometimes tragic events to, to bring that about. Um, but through my time, I've seen things go up and down. And I guess, you know, really for me, um, we're, we're lucky to work in this community because we have such good support. I mean, I can go places daily and people will come up and say, hey, thanks for what you do. Thanks for your yeah, service. Yeah. And I know that doesn't happen in all parts of the country. Um, so, but definitely, you know, there's been different times. And I don't really know, you know, for me, I don't know if I can really pinpoint maybe a specific something, year where I've seen. <clears throat> well, something that stands that out to me. I remember some officers that got shot in Dallas, Texas, yeah. that during that period. And um, I just, like the people were obviously coming out and support, but it seems like people at the top, were the opposite effect. They weren't really. Yeah, I mean, it, it and it and it does kind of vary depending on you know, um, 
maybe who's in office and kind of the climate um, and, and culture and things like that and, and perspectives, of course. Um, but, you know, I think that, and the other thing I would say is just that policing in North Dakota isn't the same as policing in California. Right, Texas, right, right. Totally Florida, different. Right? Yeah. It's different everywhere. So that that's one thing that when we have these different types of police reforms and different perspectives and people want to do kind of like a blanket reform for law enforcement, in my opinion, that doesn't work. Right. Because, like I said, policing in California ain't the same as policing in North Dakota. And so if you have a blanket type policy, that might not work here. Yeah. You know, yeah. so... Um, but I, you know, go back to the original question. I don't, for me, pinpointing a year, I mean, uh, throughout my years in law enforcement, 25, You've I've never seen felt it. In, have you oh, felt it here a little bit? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, a few, so when we had the, the, uh, the riots in Fargo, yeah. it, it seemed like at that time, maybe we, um, there was, it seemed to be maybe a little bit less respect for, for law enforcement nationwide. And I think that kind of trickled into the area a little bit, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that was probably the biggest time that I saw anything. Cool. So um, that would be my next <laughs> topic. Well, <laughs> one second, because, uh, uh, I mean, we definitely attract a younger crowd. And I, I just kind of want to get a little bit more of your, your like, career backstory, sure. I guess. Yeah, that would uh, be great. I mean, I, I've had a lot of great opportunities um, in my time as law enforcement through the different leaders I've had, two different sheriffs I've worked under. And they've given me a lot of great opportunities. So um, I started off in 90, 1998. I graduated from NDSU with a criminal justice degree. Um, I grew up in a military and law enforcement family. My grandpa was uh, the sheriff in Emmons County, North Dakota. That's awesome. And my, my dad, as we were talking downstairs, he, he retired full-time out of the military. He was drafted out of high school, was in Vietnam from 67 uh, to 68. And uh, came back, got out of the military for a little while, and then went back into the Guard full-time and uh, was in, in the Iraq War as well. So he spent some time um, in, a, in a couple major wars. He's got some post-traumatic from that. But um, part-time, he did some law enforcement work as well. So I always grew up in that, that type of environment. And, um, and, and so I knew, you know, when I was going to college, I knew that I wanted to do this, but I was kind of also um, experiencing or... Um, Kind of looking in the field of business as well because i did i knew that in a law enforcement career you don't make a lot of money yeah yeah um it's it's all really about public service and uh um, which is crazy to me yeah and, I, and and so i you know there was part of me that hey you know i want to want to make a lot of money someday um but as as i worked my way through college it, i always came back to the fact that i really wanted to serve the community and and do the law enforcement thing so i graduated from ndsu with a criminal justice degree Started in 98, started off in the jail, worked in the jail for a couple of years, went to patrol, worked patrol for five, um, worked at the Narcotics Drug Task Force for about four and a half, um, came out of there and, and did uh, training sergeant for a while. Uh, so, you know, I was a firearms instructor, taser instructor, uh, defensive tactics, and um, supervised the Metro Area Street Crimes Unit for a little while, which is our gang unit. And... Gun, gun unit in town mm -hmm. and um and you've been in all of it yeah I, I, i've had really good opportunities and i mean i wanted to put myself in those different positions to gain knowledge in all areas of law enforcement because yeah. each one of those positions brings a different uh level of knowledge to the table for when sure. you do those and uh my, my biggest thing is i was with red river valley swat for 17 years okay. left there as wow. assistant commander and and uh that was probably the the highlight of my career to this point i mean i, I love being sheriff and and serving the citizens of Cass She's like County. kicking down doors. Yep, and did, did a lot of that. I mean, there was, you know, five different situations where we yeah. took gunfire. Yeah. Um, had, a, had a SWAT officer uh, take a shotgun round to the helmet and different things. Damn. And so, um, but I, I liked, you know, that getting gaining that knowledge and bringing it back and, and teaching other people and training other people uh, was really important to me. I uh, Last year, myself and another person from Essentia, we trained... 52 businesses on active shooter response. That's really important to me now is bringing that knowledge to our citizens, our businesses, so that they can protect themselves. And and I like doing that. So uh, that's a little bit about my career. And, um, you know, this is my second term as sheriff. I've been fortunate to have the citizens of Cass County vote me in. And I've been able to serve them. And a I term, really enjoy that. A term for sheriff. Sorry, I don't know. Is it two yeah, years? It's four years. Four so, years? Yep, every Just, four years okay. I, would, I have to run for, for my spot. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's, yep. that's definitely interesting to know. I, I, 
a lot of people, I'm sure, would. Well, and, I, and, and the other thing with it is I don't think a lot of people understand the difference maybe between a police department and sheriff's office. Right? Yeah. Um, the, the main difference is, is, again, I'm elected by the people. Um, the chief of police is usually appointed to their position. We work directly for the citizens, and we have jurisdiction over all of Cass County. So we can work in Fargo, West Fargo, uh, on the interstates, out in the rural communities. Um, we try to concentrate our patrol efforts out in those smaller communities because they don't have a lot of money. Yeah. And, you know, they don't have enough money to have their own police department. We're the only one that has jurisdiction out there. So we want to be out in those areas and help them provide them public safety. And, um, and then as the sheriff, I oversee the jail. So there's one jail in Cass County and if you're arrested in Fargo, West Fargo, wherever they come to the Cass County jail. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabe works for a state trooper. He's exactly. right? yep, yep, so yep, yep, what does yep, state, really well. state troopers just do the interstates then? Yeah, you know, they're in the state highways. They can do stuff on county highways as well. Um, if we get busy out in the county, sometimes we'll call them for assistance. Um, Gabe's Gabe's pretty square dude, square yeah. away dude. He's yeah. on the he on the interdiction team, so he's doing a lot with uh, you know people bringing illegal stuff into Cass County and looking for narcotics, human trafficking, things like nice. that. That's oh awesome. wow, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's cool. We know some yep. bad dudes, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. definitely yeah, a so. couple patrol. Uh, people that like uh, there's one in jamestown i met a couple weeks ago on on my job and i was like oh you know gabe he's like yeah i know gabe he's awesome i'm like mm-hmm. oh that's yeah, so gabe, sick Gabe's to hear yeah. So, yeah um okay so 2020 mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a tough year um so i'm gonna give you my opinion mm-hmm. and then you guys can disagree with me if you want. <laughs> Are you assuming that they're going to already? Before oh, yeah, because we're brown and no. he tends to leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've, already said, I've already said my opinion when Woods, Woods was on here the first time. You guys know my opinion, but <clears throat> yeah. um, I'm pretty certain now, just after watching the video and looking at all the evidence that George Floyd had died with from drugs and having a heart condition, I don't believe that that 150-pound dude kneeling on his neck that's fine right but i told these guys i was 250 pounds at the time and i was working with a dude that was probably less he was less than uh derek chauvin and i was like lay down on the ground let me let me put my knee on your neck and see if you can breathe Mm -hmm. and he was able to move his head he's like it's really uncomfortable but i can still breathe but if you go look at the autopsy report he has fentanyl in his system he has methamphetamine in his system. He has THC in his system. Combine that with a, a, a heart defect. You can't tell me that that isn't the reason why he died. I, th- I think that he did have uh, medical conditions that contributed to his his death. I mean, I haven't. You obviously looked at the autopsy report somewhere, yeah. probably online or whatever. Um, I haven't looked at that. Uh, most certainly, I think that was a contributing factor. Uh, my biggest problem with the incident is is. I feel like um, Officer Chauvin probably got more involved than he should have or involved in the situation. Yeah. Um, You know, we we really work on doing tap-out methods and de-escalation and stuff like that within our organization. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are brought into our jail that are um, high on different substances, intoxicated, and things like that. And when they come in, they they, they fight with us. Right, Um, right. And so, you know, there, there are times where people have come in, they're spitting at our officers or calling them names and that can get officers hyped up. And so what we really, what we really teach is, Hey, if I notice that you're getting really involved in the situation and you're having a hard time pulling back, yep. um, you know, Hey, I'm going to come in and I'm going to tap you out and say, Hey Cody, I got this. Yeah. Let me step in and take over and give you a chance to kind of reprocess everything. Look at the whole perspective of what's going on. And then try to come back and work through that situation once you've kind of had it another perspective. Mm-hmm. You have a little opportunity to calm down. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of contributing factors in this one. Um, like, again, I don't think that uh, Officer Chauvin kneeling on him was the sole reason why so he it, passed away. The, the but, thing is, is it, if if he wasn't a white dude, you wouldn't have heard about it. You would, you probably wouldn't have heard about it on on national TV. It might have been on the local news, mm-hmm. but you wouldn't have been you wouldn't have seen it on CNN every single day. Very possible. I mean, obviously, with not but just that. looking at that guy, he looks like he's 120 pounds, and uh, George Floyd was a big man. He was, yeah, he was, he was big, very big, big and 
there's just I just physically don't think it's possible that he could have. Yeah, I think I think the the, restricted the, the point that, that you're much. looking at it from though is that the the knee being on the neck is what killed him. But I think what you're saying is the knee being on the neck with all the other underlying conditions, a, the drugs, another, the heart condition, it was, it was a factor. contributing factor. Yeah. yeah, like it might have initiated everything else to go into haywire mm-hmm. and cause the, the, you know what I mean? It's it's like what they're doing, what they did with COVID is like people who had three underlying conditions and got COVID would be, they would say, yeah, they died of COVID. Right. Yeah. But they died with my, COVID and is what actually happened. My biggest thing is in, in situations <clears throat> like that and, this one where the person's on some some substance that's making them act different, act aggressively, whatever it is, um, that can, you know, play into people's obviously their decisions and how they respond to things. And for me, it's always like, man, just when law enforcement's trying to place you in arrest or they're dealing with you, just don't resist. Yeah. Because yeah. anytime that someone resists, then force has to be applied. You guys know that from right. what we do, working out yeah. and stuff, right? I'm wrestling around, whatever. When someone resists, force has to be applied. Anytime someone has to apply force, there's a good chance someone's going to get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's the suspect, the officer, whatever, someone's probably going to get hurt. So, and that's that's the biggest thing for me. Um, And I try to tell people that when I'm working through situations. Listen, don't resist because no matter what, we got to deal with the situation. We got to take care of it. We got to handle it. So, no matter what, man, it's something. We got to we got to stop the situation. It's gonna so happen. Yeah. Just comply. <laughs> let's let's work through what we have right now. Even if you got to go to jail, people don't typically stay in jail for a long time. I mean, you're gonna go to court. You're gonna get bond. You're gonna have your chance to have your day in court. Let's mm. let's let the process play out. Um, there's no reason getting hurt over it. To my my opinion. <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, when the riots, I guess riot. Uh, came here to Fargo kind of pissed me off. I was like, what, what is that having to do with us here in Fargo? Have anything to do with them, those guys at yeah. all? No, and I, and I agree with that. I mean, I certainly, we always want to respect people's first amendment, right? Um, Were those to, people to that came opinion. in, I heard this, if this is true, that they bust a bunch of people that work from around here. Is that true? I don't know if they bust them, but there were people here that weren't from, from, from around here. That weren't from yeah. the area. They came yeah. to, to, to ignite the drama. And yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. There was insiders, yeah. Um, you know, my biggest deal with that is is um, anyone who wants to express their First Amendment right, we'll, we'll do our best to protect that, whoever's yeah, doing yeah. it, right? Yeah. But when you start hurting people and breaking other people's property, wrecking other people's property, then we're at a different level. And that, that really upset me because we had business owners downtown. They don't have anything to do with the situation. And now you're trying to burn down their business. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because our to government told it, them you know? it's okay. So, yeah. well, and it's yeah. like a mob That's mentality. That's the shitty part thing. about it is the government said it's okay. So what we had here was a bunch of people that didn't know what the fuck was really going on. They just wanted to get in on it because. They wanted to be involved. Yeah, they wanted to be involved. They wanted to steal some shit because they seen everyone else getting away with it in big cities. And so they thought we're going to bring into a little Mostly Fargo. peaceful protest. That's what yeah, they said. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm, from what I've seen, and, and I recognize a lot of dudes that were in that shit doing that. And from what I've seen, a lot of them have been reprimanded since. They've all been caught well, up for the most part. Yeah, I mean, there are people obviously that got, you know, served some time through the through the justice system and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But again, for me, it really was, you know, hey, you can come down here, have your voices be heard. Yeah. But when you start breaking things, hurting people, throwing mm-hmm. bricks at officers, um, rocks, whatever, other people trying to hurt people, burn stuff down, yeah. it's done. I mean, at that point, it's done. And uh, I did legislation as a as a as a result of that. I did legislation. Um, a couple of years later, just to try to help protect our businesses. And so now if you, you know, try to wreck someone's business during a protest, it enhances the penalty because again, I just don't, we don't need to do that. Yeah. So that's crazy. It's not fucking nationwide. Like, how is that not nationwide? (laughs) Like you wreck somebody's business that they spent their whole lives trying to build. And somebody comes in and just destroys it, and, and all you get is a slap on the wrist. Like mm-hmm. that's crazy. Like in yeah, California, yeah. they just let them go. And I drove through Minneapolis. There. What are you talking about? It was right down yeah, the street. I was gonna say Minneapolis is. I drove through downtown Fargo the the next morning because I was going down to City Hall to do the press conference for that. And um, you know, when I drove through there and I saw people, business owners owners out there sweeping up the glass from the broken windows, trying to scrape off the you know the spray paint from the, the walls yeah, and graffiti yeah. and stuff and. It, it upset me because yeah. I'm like, man, these guys, 
You know, they, like you said, they worked all their lives probably yeah. to start this business and now it's destroyed. Yeah. And uh, so the, th- the thing that pissed me off was uh, I heard people bitching about the um, uh, Fargo Police Department shooting uh, tear gas or whatever. Whatever is it called? Tear gas? Um, well, could it, it was either OC. Yeah, or, OC or whatever. Yeah, but I mean, they gave him straight up fifteen minutes. They had a countdown. They gave him like fifteen minutes to clear the area. Yeah. They said, you know, we're going to do this in fifteen minutes, and then we're going to do this in ten minutes. Five minutes. You have five minutes to clear the area. Mm-hmm. You have one minute. They gave him a countdown. Yep. And these stupid there, motherfuckers, they were doing it, so. these stupid people sat there and they were just like, oh, they, they, they sprayed me in my eyes, you know? They're all like pissed off that they, yeah. I was like, the, I, I watched the live video, guys. I saw the countdown that yep. they gave you guys and you sat there and took it. <laughs> like, yeah. get, go home. <laughs> they were shooting, shooting like um, bean bags or something at people too, weren't they? Because I know someone who got hit. Yeah, and he was crying all over, like those fucking stupid, dirty cops fucking shot me with this shit, and he had like a big sore across his arm, like it, it cut his flesh open and pussy. Yeah, he yeah. was. Everyone was just like, "What the fuck are you doing there, bro? Like you have nothing to do with this yeah. shit, you know?" Yeah. So typically, again, it's going to be OC or CS that we we deploy as far as chemical agents, mm-hmm. and then for the stuff that you're talking about, there could have been bean bag rounds used. Um, typically, we're using forty millimeter, um, less lethal, um, like rubber bullets exact or impact yeah, okay. rounds. And um, yeah, that, that's, oh, that's yeah. what typically is referred to as a rubber yeah. bullet. But it's it's literally a sponge round. Yeah. If you're in close proximity, it's gonna hurt. But it's you know, it's big and it's meant to not penetrate someone's yeah. skin. So um, those are the types of things. But when we do that, we don't just come out and shoot unless there's an immediate threat. Yeah. Uh, much like Cody said, there's gonna be warnings given. Hey, right. you know, you need to disperse. In ten minutes, we're gonna deploy chemical agents well, to disperse and, you. And, and I saw some dudes freaking jumping on their cars jumping on the hood and yeah. trying to smash the window and stuff. So mm-hmm. there was just, there's zero excuse for any of those people that stuck around for that. There's yeah. zero excuse. That should be the next challenge is Cody has to take a beanbag to like the leg or something. No, I've done that before. It's hurts. You haven't done it on camera. No. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> take one for the pod. Dude, yeah, I was the pod. watching that live video. I'll do, I was so I was so pissed. I was like, God, I wish I could be on riot control right now. No way would I stick around for any of that. <laughs> like, Give me a freaking shield and a baton. <laughs> oh, <fuck some guys. laughs> so we had to do we had to do some riot control training when I was in Kosovo, mm-hmm. and it was country versus country. So it was like us and the Puerto Ricans versus the. No, it was like us and the French versus the Puerto Ricans and Irish, and um, so we were. I was a freaking shield guy, so I was on the front line. <laughs> beat people. Mm. This is training, but it was fucking serious, dude. Like we were, we were beating each other up. And and were you guys training in the other countries, or were they? Because it mean, was like a lot of times the use of force and things yeah. that you can do is different from country. So to that's country, that so. was our, our whole our whole reason for being in Kosovo was to, in, in case there was a riot. That's so we we did constant riot control training. Mm-hmm. But uh, so, anyways, we uh, we were with the French. And these stupid motherfuckers. We were like going toe to toe with these with these other dudes, and the French shot some gas. And it was supposed to go over us, and I heard a ting 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 ting, and I looked down, and it's right next to my feet, and it went. Poof. Yeah, and all that all that OC gas just <laughs> we <were> like, run. <laughs> so we had to ha- hightail it back to the buses. It was like a good half mile. That's crazy. The freaking wind was blowing our direction, <laughs> oh, so shit. it followed us all the way back. And we're sitting here like, oh, we can't see. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not fun. Right? CS is not yeah. fun. Yeah, so. ah, yeah, but um, but anyways, um, yeah. So uh, there was just no excuse for all that. I was fr- pretty disappointed. To see that here in town, even yeah. even if there weren't uh, those guys weren't from around here, which is kind of crazy. There was indiv- individuals from around here doing yeah, it as well. So there's a lot of Dion's boys from high school. I definitely not uh, from um, high school from me, <laughs> but they were older than me, and I did go to high school at some point with them. But they weren't yeah. like my boys. But, but again, probably, <laughs> no boys of mine. <laughs> probably being influenced by outside exactly. people, yeah, which was un- sure. the unfortunate thing. It's the so, crowd. I mean, once yeah. once a crowd starts doing things, it yeah. makes people do things they wouldn't normally do. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's and now it's crazy because you look, you look at Minneapolis. Minneapolis used to be a destination for everybody in Fargo to go to to get out of Fargo mm-hmm. and go to somewhere big and you know have fun. But after twenty twenty, when like 
Jacob Frey was screaming, defund the police, defund the police. And then it was like the police department got their legs chopped off. And now Minneapolis, all I see on the news is constant shootings and break-ins and crime riddled streets. And it's just, even you said, it's not a place that we really want to visit anymore because of all the yeah, crime, I mean, all it, the crime. It's sad to see it decline as it did. And it definitely has, like you said, I mean, I've, I know some officers down there. There's some parts of the city they don't even go into unless there's some major crimes. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, it's really sad to see that decline. Uh, anytime they have an incident like that, you know, my personal belief and is you got to let the system, you got to let so, the system work. I mean, we live in a democracy, right? Democracy is following a rule, rule of law. Um, and yeah. if we don't have that, you're, you know, people, they can't, they can't succeed. We can't thrive and stuff. And yeah. so, um, you know, you got to, there's a there's a there's a system in play and and what really irritates me a lot of times is that people don't let the system play out so you know let it play out see what happens um you know in this instance the officers that that uh, we're dealing with uh with mr floyd and then um you know if you don't like the outcome after that and you know let your voices be heard don't break things you don't hurt other people let your but a lot of times you know the these individuals are protesting before we even know the outcome. They didn't yeah. even give it a I chance. Mean, yeah. I mean, the guy got Chauvin's, 40 years. Chauvin's in jail. I mean, for 40 that years. was the outcome that people wanted. Yeah. Um, so, you know, now why did we have to destroy like said, all of destroy the, the city? Yeah. You know, it's not a place that people can go anymore. You, you saw in the news, that much like we talked here, there were people that had generations of businesses down in those areas that got destroyed and they'll never be replaced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, they didn't just uh, get it's, windows it's, broken and shit. No, these businesses are destroyed. Down, and like yeah. I said, it's generations upon generations that work through these businesses yeah. um, that just, they aren't there anymore. Yeah. So it's, and then new, new businesses don't want to go there because they know that, oh. it, that, that could potentially happen to them. So they just are like, yeah. screw that. There's I'm not, not going safety in some of those places. Like yeah. you just said, it's yeah. like, I, I go out there and I, I'm obviously like closer to the college because I got friends that are in that age range and um, it's, I don't feel safe out there. Like I, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. I don't like being out there for more than a couple of days. Like you, it, it all looks much more run down than it did yeah. four years ago, five years ago. And it hasn't been like any, it, it hasn't been much time for that. And it, it's kind of sad to see. And it's just, if you're not in a nice part of town, it's like you don't want to be walking down the street. Right. I mean, the last time that I knew, they were down 300 officers. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I mean, it's, it's hard. Insane. It's hard to hard to patrol and and maintain that public safety when there you're was down just the a, officer, so. a whole uh, team of officers that quit all on the spot mm-hmm. recently in in Minnesota somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Just that we just talked about Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. Like they yeah. just the the chief, Hope. everyone just quit on the yeah. spot left them hanging and, it, and you know there a couple of years back i don't know if you guys remember but they changed it, some of the use of force after that incident yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in in uh, minnesota i had written a letter to um governor walls i never did get a response back from mine i figured i wouldn't but my letter simply said listen you, you changed the use of force you didn't give law enforcement a time to adjust to this and what you need to remember is the the bordering cities along the different states you know we we have working relationships yeah. across state lines mm-hmm. Especially here, we have all good working relationships with Clay County Sheriff's Office, Morad. We share resources. We share a SWAT team. If you make law changes like that and don't give time for people to adjust, any it's not going to work. Yeah. So we quit going over there for a while. Now, as you saw, they have some changes recently with, with their school resource yeah, so, officers. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And um, what's happening there is people are just making decisions at the legislative level and not really asking law enforcement, hey, how is this going to affect you? And taking right. a good... 360 degree perspective look yeah. at what's the change going to do and how can we make it suit everyone not just the right. change you know so do you, th- so do you think that's intentional though like by these legislators and people like that because they know like right now their their number one push is like school shootings and get everyone's guns it's bad school safety and in the in school safety set at all time like need mm-hmm. and they make a decision to say let's take the Take them out of the yeah. school. But yeah. That makes no sense to me. It, I think that's just like I think a it's just people, setup. I think people are just making rash decisions. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I guess I, I didn't sit in their legislative session, so I didn't hear the discussions. I, yeah. you, you, was it you that posted about yeah. it? I didn't really I get said, to read the article. I, yeah, but I sent it to you guys. Yeah, I didn't read the article. What did the article say? So basically, why, why, it, was, why, 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 why? it had to do with, like, the use of force again. It was yeah. about, like, the way that they were able to handle the students. They weren't allowed to, like... Um, they changed the word. Like, uh, put them in different holds. Put and them stuff in different and holds and, and thrown them yeah. out. And 
But the concern with that is, is when you have people, you guys know this, when people make quick, sudden moves or react quickly, yeah. people react instinctively to try to counter that. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you if you something happens quickly and you react and respond and get someone down on the ground, now you just thrown them out. Now you're in trouble. Now you can get yeah. charged. And so yeah. the agencies look at it like, hey, you know, I don't want my officer to be in that type of a situation. And even the officers, I mean, when we had the yeah. use of force thing in Minnesota, I had officers telling me, hey, I don't really want to go over there. I mean, I want to help the community, but I also don't want to be charged with something. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's I, scary. I'm worried about it. Yeah. So, we'll and, they're, and they're and after them right set now, a too. Precedence. You make a mistake as a cop today, man, yeah. and they're on your ass. You just kind of set a precedence by doing all that. But yeah. in in high school, um, I had witnessed a couple fights in our big common area in at Morehead High I went to, and we obviously had officers, and these these people would be fighting, and all of a sudden, a big dude would come up, pick them up by their waist, and just carry one of them away, and that worked every time. Yeah, but they can't you know, do that now. They can't now, do now that. You're holding them, so that's exactly you know, breaking it's a, the law. It's an illegal hold. Yeah, yeah. yeah so now it's uh, crazy, man. I just don't. It's so it's, it's along the same lines of of Mayor Frey defunding the police. I mean, when look at look at the community when after he defunded the police, it went downhill. More at high school, you take the officers out. You're gonna have freaking fights every day, and who's gonna break those up? No, because if the teachers, teachers can't do if the either. teachers they get involved, they're gonna be the same situation. And, and I feel like sometimes there's small groups of people that are really pushing for these changes, and I think sometimes we just have leaders that are afraid to tell them, "Hey, we can't do that." Yeah. Okay. If we do that, this could be a result of that, and just sit down and have honest conversations. And those people might not like that still, but you have to make the best decisions for everyone, not just a small group. Yeah, the majority. Well, even in the email like that the school was sending out, like they they don't they're not happy with this decision, obviously. So yeah. it, it must have been something that happened super quickly without notification. It came from the top, like and, usual. And uh and mm-hmm. and it's putting their kids and their teachers at risk and, and it just doesn't seem r- right for anyone. And I really don't understand why they would do something like that. And hopefully they can end up getting a change back somehow or they can figure out a way for those people. What would be the attack. reason behind um, a policy like defunding the police? Like what, what where were the, what was the thinking there? I know they were talking about having like social workers get more involved. Did that ever transpire? Like was there actual social workers being trained up? You know, they, they might have tried to do some of that in, in the Minneapolis area. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, we haven't really implemented that here what you always got to remember is if you have a volatile situation and you're worried how the law enforcement is going to react or you know if they're going to get hurt yeah. now you're putting a social worker in that position mm-hmm. right who doesn't have any training maybe to defend themselves they don't have the tools to do so so you know why would you do that and is there a time and a place to have uh, a social worker be involved in the situation sure but initially when law enforcement's gets to a situation they need to make an assessment of the volatility of it you know and when people are having mental health issues um those aren't easy situations to work through um so i uh you know the reason for the defunding is i think in people's minds is they're thinking that they're going to limit police authority through doing that oh um that that just doesn't i mean that's doesn't work no um, and in actuality, I think it has the reverse effect because when you start defunding law enforcement and taking tools away from how people can protect themselves, then you have good officers who start to leave the profession. Yeah. And then you got to lower your hiring standards. And then we turn into this situation, right, where we're bringing, uh, we were using lower hiring standards and now we're bringing people into the profession that might not be the best people. Right, right, right. And right, now right, we're right. getting into yep. more trouble, right? Because yep. now they're not making good decisions. And that's even making it look worse for law enforcement. Now yeah, you want to yeah. defund it more. And so we got, you know, those are things that I don't think people take into perspective. It's a domino effect. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. It, and so, um, you know, funding law enforcement and getting them more training, de-escalation training, things like that would be, in my opinion, the way to go and not defund. That's, that's what I've been saying so, for a while now. It's like, you need to, I, I, I think I said it during 2020. I was like, we can't defund them. We need to fund them more. Yeah, more they training, need more get training, better, tools, better, you know? better everything. Like, mm-hmm. you pay you better, get better quality candidates. I'm not saying not saying that we don't have quality candidates, but yep. I'm just saying the, the higher the pay, the higher more quality pay, of pay. Yeah, exactly. And then the more training, like, um, you know, hand-to-hand combat training, whatever you guys need, 
that or resources less lethal you know yeah. we've, we've got a number of least le- less lethal options available to our our deputies but i don't yeah. have enough of it to have in everyone's car yeah and yeah. cass county is large right 1768 square miles so if i've got an individual out on page who's dealing with a situation they're trying to de-escalate it yeah and my next closest person is in oxbow i mean that's that's a long ways even running code and the person in oxbow might have the less lethal tools this person doesn't have it. So right. that's where we get into the, hey, let's fund and let's get more equipment. Let's get more training yeah. to work through these situations. And I know so, uh, I heard this on the Joe Rogan podcast. I can't remember who I feel it was like Ronnie Coleman, I think, because he was a former <laughs> cop. Yeah, he was a Texas cop. So uh, he was saying like uh, it would cop all the all cops should have some sort of jujitsu training. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if they get into the those certain those certain predicaments, they could freaking <laughs> just stand up. Put people yeah, well, out. Well, I don't know if too many up. people really argued with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's obviously true. he showed up on scene. I'm, he tore so many sockets. So saw him put on his his vest one time when some of the little uh, videos that he had shot yeah. himself, yeah. and the thing barely went over his yeah. chest. <laughs> like, so, but anyways, um, yeah, I mean, it's you know, we we put all of our staff through defensive tactics, but there are a number of agencies might not have the resources to do that or the yeah. tra- you know they can't get their people to training because they don't have the money to do it yeah um, they can't send someone off to be an instructor and come back mm-hmm. into the agency because maybe they don't have enough people enough staffing to send this person away for a week so yeah there's a number of factors in there and not everyone's trained the same yeah it's just it's it's freaking crazy man like i watched this video and I don't know if there there could have been anything done. I watched this video of this female cop that was approaching a house, and this guy came out with a knife and started walking towards her, and she kept telling him, drop a knife, drop a knife. But then she tripped and fell mm-hmm. down, and this guy, like, got on top of her. She ended up shooting him, but um, she could have. She lived, but she, she could have. She didn't end up shooting him? She, she, he did, or she did. She did, yeah, okay. She, but he, he lived, she lived, but it was just like. I wonder if, like, she had gotten enough training or if it was just one of those mm-hmm. things where she accidentally tripped, you know. Yeah. But I mean, it happens. It does. Yeah. Especially with so much adrenaline. Like, this guy was just... He, he and you was, don't want to kill him. She obviously didn't. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you don't want to be freaking <laughs> on, the, on the news every day. No. To, you know? It was one of those situations where she was a white cop and there was a black dude. Yeah. Had a knife. Oh, yeah. See, that him. makes the decision even harder to, to yeah. react the way you should because mm-hmm. even if you feel like it's a justified legal yeah, you response. Think you're probably going to get judged. You, you, yeah. You got to think people about the fact like, oh, mind. great. It's a, you know, I've heard stories. Now you're hesitating. Even, I've yeah. even heard stories of black cops pulling over black people and being like, it's a shit show now. I hate doing it because they look at me in all my blackness and they're yeah. like, Oh, real? You pull me over because I'm black, you, huh? yeah. and they're just they like, "Motherfucker, like, look at me, I'm oh, black." Oh, you're on their side, yeah, huh? Yeah, you know it's weird, <laughs> man. You, you, but I mean, really, it's a matter of just. And I, I know this is easy to say, not always thought the same, but really, just got to look at the situation and what you're right. dealing with, and not, you know, obviously the color of the person or anything like that. I mean, it's um, we have certain policies, procedures, training that we follow, and you got to treat everyone the same. Yeah. yeah. So, well, it's just you. yeah. I mean. Being a cop is probably the hardest job that there is out there because any day could be your last. I mean, you pull up on somebody, pull over for a simple traffic stop, and they could be just sitting with a gun right next to their door ready yeah, to blast. You see it all you know? the time. I yeah, mean, I mean you, it's you, stuff you, like that. Like, people don't – that's why I get so upset when I see people scream and defund the police. So I'm just, I just want uh-huh. to slap the shit up. Yeah, it's uh, – you know, you, you have that in the back of your mind every day that – you know, it's a dangerous job and you could get hurt any day. I mean, certainly we saw that on right. uh, on, on July 14th. I mean, guys investigating traffic crash and not expecting that they're going to get ambushed, you know, yeah. not even enough, a chance really to, to defend themselves. So you always have that in the back of your mind. But, um, you know, you, you know that going into the position, into the profession. So, yeah. So that's my, that's my, I'm sorry. You yeah, I was just going to say, in, in jumping into that uh, discussion, um, regarding that that situation that happened here in Fargo, that's why I want to bring is, up. Is this th- this guy that that uh, attacked the officers that day was was he really headed like downtown to the fair? Is that so, as far as like people know anyway? Yeah. Um, well, obviously, first off, I mean, I wasn't involved in that investigation. Right. Sure. Um, so, uh, but you know, w- what came out of that is that he did have information yeah. uh, about the street fair, so that would lead one to believe that sure. he was definitely looking into that. For whatever reason, we'll probably never know. Right. Um, but I think you, a person could draw their own speculation, 
You know, why would he be looking at that? Right, right. And have all and these had all that yep. arsenal on him, man. So. Yeah, that I'm a little confused about. So we are still actively as a military in Syria right now. We still have troops over there. People are still, you know, it, it, there's fighting going on. Okay. But this guy was from Syria and he came over here in like 2018 or, or 2013, something like that. But then he said, they said that he was starting to look into mass, mass casualty events in 2018. So he, I'm just a little confused and how like, and then they said that he was like on this report, but it wasn't a terrorist watch. It was some, some other report, but how was he able to acquire all this ammunition? He worked for shields in the gun department from what I understood. Yeah, that, that I don't but know. Still, but still, I didn't hear that. Yeah. But. He's got a Syrian, a Syrian um, background, right? And he starts buying. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think where you're going is obviously we know we're not getting there along the best with Syria. And we have yeah. this person that's moved here from Syria. Why isn't he more on more of a watch? And he's probably. S- and they, um, I mean, they start. They saw that he was looking up mass cast events, but I don't know if it just didn't trigger until he looked up a certain amount of mass cast events. But yeah. it just, I don't, I don't know the exact timeline of everything. So I mean, I don't. Obviously, there was there was a tip that came in. Yeah. Um, from what we know now, and they knew about um, him, right? Like they, somebody knew something about him. Yeah, but nothing he had was, you know, he had he hadn't obtained anything illegal, right? Yeah. And that's so, that's the crazy that's, thing. That's the you know that's the thing with it is is like the guy wasn't doing anything illegal, right? Um, but yeah, I mean you you would like to hope or like to think that anyone thinking to do that, we'd be able to intercept that information somehow uh-huh. to to prevent a lot of these things. But a lot of times it. You can't, you know, I, I mean, obviously we all think it and, and I just want to be able to say it is uh, like, thank those guys for being brave enough to do what they did. Absolutely. And obviously yeah. the sacrifice they put on the line there. Um, it was, it, I watched the footage and I was like, these guys are, they, they got a lot of heart to do what they do, you know? So yeah. that yeah. was crazy to see that footage get released. That oh, was yeah. like, that was intense to watch, man. It, it, it just gave me a whole different perspective of what went down, but in the same breath, it was like, wow, like what an amazing job he did it, it, as far I'm as doing it, yeah, as yeah. far as doing his job, man. I was blown away at how he cool he kept it and he, you know, he kept his eye on this guy the whole time yeah. and moved around, made the calls that he needed to make. Like I, I thought that was a yeah. stellar performance. You know, do you know uh Officer Robinson? I don't think so. He's in he is in the military. Is so, he? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what what uh I think it's Army Guard, but well, not sure what group or whatever, but um, yeah, no, it, it's it, it definitely gives you a different perspective when you yeah, watch it. Yeah. Uh, those things that we we train for, yeah. you'll be never have to use it, but certainly yeah. his training kicked in. Especially and he was here, able to, you, know, you, you just never imagined it happening yeah. a little old fart like that. Sure. Yeah, 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 it's nuts, man. And the you know the balance of firepower, like he had a pistol and that guy had a freaking rifle, and <laughs> you could de- you could definitely tell that he was trained for the job because that was a hell of a shot. Yeah. Well placed yeah. round. Yeah, making a handgun shot at yeah. seventy five feet approximation. What they said is it, yeah. it's a tough shot. Yeah. Yeah. That is especially under tough. under pressure. Under yeah, that guy was so, relentless though. He didn't want to go down. He kept yeah. reaching for his gun. Mm-hmm. He kept putting it up like he he was on a mission, man. Yeah, yeah. So the right man was was on right the, man. Yeah, the, absolutely. The, the and yep. I was uh, I was wondering what uh, to switch it up a little bit. Get into something a little lighter. What are some things that you like to do in your free time? I'm sure you don't have very much, but genre yeah, list. There's, there's a, yeah, there's a number I know of things from, I like to do from Sports Center oh, back yeah, in the day, like like way Center back days, in the so. day. I remember you there. Yeah, no, that's uh, you know, the job is is pretty stressful. Most people don't know, but our agency is is large. We have approximately 235 people. Holy, wow. um, you know, most people don't know that. And um, I did when you not wait, know that. I, you, I thought you had like ten. Yeah, I thought it was like you and <laughs> Boone and a few other guys. <laughs> most, people, most people do. But keep in mind, you know, we oversee the jail, so I've got a lot of deputies. Ah, that I work suppose, in the jail yeah, and stuff. yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, our jail's full right now. We're adding another pod onto there, and we do that of approximately two hundred and fifty people. Holy! So, um, the reason that I bring that up is, um, you know, that the stress of the job. There's there's a lot of it. Uh, some of it good stress. Some of it obviously not so good. 
And um, for me to maintain my health and stay healthy, it's it's really important to me that I that I work out. So that's one of my main things that I do. Um, I try to hit the the gym, um, you know, daily if I can, mm-hmm. and that helps me relieve a lot of stress. That's my time to not think about anything else. And you know, if I go to to the gym, then it's great to interact with other people outside of law enforcement. If I work out at work, um, again, it's just me just taking that hour to hour and a half and not thinking about work stuff yeah. and clearing my mind. Because I've noticed over the last couple of years that the jobs um, uh, had an impact on, on physically on me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's important to me. Um, but other outside of work, I'm just, I mean, not, not that anyone else is, and I'm just a regular guy. I got a, a Harley. I love to ride motorcycle. Um, I've got a classic car. And, uh, I like to do those things. I like to interact with people that way as well. Cause then I think they see me in a different light. You know, people say, Hey, I didn't know that you, you're into cars or you have a classic car. Or you like to go on motorcycle runs and ride bike with other people. And, and uh, that's, that's really a way for me to connect with other people mm-hmm. in a different way outside of law enforcement. Mm-hmm. Um, cause sometimes when you do law enforcement all the time and that's the world you live in, when people look at you a little different. And I, I still like to maintain the friendships I've had and interact with other groups of people and, and a variety of different groups of people with what other people like to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I remember when you came, I think it was in 2018 or so you came to Metroflex, right? Yep. You and, uh, what's that other guy's name? He's a marshal now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Matt? No, no, no. I know uh, he was from Sports Center too. Yeah. yeah. Older guy. Uh, he boxer. I think he used to box too. Oh yeah. Um, I can't think of his damn name. Yeah. I, I was trying to think of it earlier yeah. today and I couldn't think of it. I, I see like, him all. He comes yeah. in H and I all the time. Too. Yeah. Drives a Jeep. Yep. Um, oh, you're talking Myron. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Myron. Myron. Oh, Myron yeah. works at the sheriff's office. So yeah. Oh, I worked okay. out okay. with him back in the sports center days yep. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. so he used to come to Metroflex yeah. too. Yep. And him and Al Schmidt used to work yeah. out together yeah. at the sports center all the time. <laughs> That was a big yeah, guy. I'll still know enforcement. He's out west. Is he? So, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, Myron, I think I think he he uh he still works out a lot. He works out at our like I was mentioning to you guys before, we have a little gym at our, our workplace. Yeah, yeah. And uh that's that's oftentimes where I'm working out to save I feel like time, he still has a, a membership though too. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's yeah, like I think it's extremely important for a, a guy like you and everybody that's in law enforcement. Yeah. Basically, anybody that has a stressful job should be doing some sort of physical activity. Everyone should just step yeah. away, step away from whatever the hell you're doing, and get those endorphins. Feel better about yourself. And God, it's such a stress reliever. I freaking love lifting weights, man. I yeah, love dopamine it. hit. You know, I did. I, I do it for that reason. But then I also did it, like I was mentioning to you guys before, being on SWAT for 17 years. Um, that that had some some uh physical impacts on my body because um when i first got on there and you had known this from being in the military but wearing the extra vest yeah uh, backpacks and stuff i mean it's 80 pounds of extra gear yeah uh, that you're you're wearing for you know sometimes 12 hours if you're on a standoff yeah and uh for your body to be able to hold up that weight and and take that on uh you need to have some some physical strength to do that so that was another driving factor behind me uh wanting to stay in good shape and Mm. I could just yeah. tell, like, when I play hockey during the week, when I come home, I'm just in a good ass mood. Dude. <laughs> yeah. After just skating for an hour straight, dude, I'm like, I was See, now, if I went and so played happy. hockey, I probably wouldn't be in the best mood when I got home because I can't skate very well. So, yeah, <laughs> pretty frustrated. Yeah, just, <laughs> well, uh, speaking of mental health, um, I just saw you on TV yesterday and uh, actually had it on mute, and then I had to rewind it and listen to your press conference or your little uh, interview, I guess. Yeah, with about the this middle school. But the uh, individual, yeah, what was the deal there? I mean, he said that he had, like, he was getting, did you guys listen yeah, to yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't listen to that, but I read. He was getting uh, transmissions, I guess. Yeah, um, and I can't talk too much about that because yeah. it's still under investigation, but literally what happened is is tip came into the FBI uh, through their guardian system. When they get those, um, typically what that they do then is reach out to the local a department that's in that area, which is what they did, which was us because the threat was towards the Horace Middle School. Um, and then uh, from there, we what we're going to do right away is obviously worry about the safety of the children. So we sent extra resources to all the schools. That was our first move. Yeah, so and then it was, hey, we need to go locate this person. And um, But, yeah, I mean, there was definitely some um, 
a different communication with that individual that didn't really make sense in, in our mind and in the way that the tip came in. So I think there's definitely uh, some mental health issues there that, that uh, we need to work through as we're doing the investigation and, and considerations. So. Mm. So just talk, did, did you get a chance to talk to the guy? I did not talk to the, okay. to the guy. We are investigators of that. So. What, what, what kind of stuff would, what, what kind of stuff would happen to get on that guardian watch list? Like what would he have to do? So he actually, this was actually a first party tip. So he called it in himself. What? He called it in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he oh, let damn. them know he was thinking about doing that. I mean, he self-reported. So, and then a lot of the things that you mentioned were in that tip. Um, a lot of the, you know, what he was talking about and what he was thinking and stuff, which some of it obviously didn't make sense to us. So, and this guy wasn't from around here, right? Um, that that part I don't know. I thought, I don't, okay. not sure where I thought he was he, from. Somebody, I don't know. Somebody said he was living in the hotel room or something. I think he was a. He was from a small town of North Dakota. Was yeah. he? Not? That was where we came across him, was because he even reported where he was at. That's interesting. That's so yeah, yeah, I didn't know that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's intriguing. Yeah. Well, it's good to know that you guys are friggin' on the ball. And yeah. Rapid response, you know. Yeah. Our school resource deputy program is really an important program to us. I mean, we got people yeah, in yeah. all the schools, and it's for that reason. I mean, the good coordination amongst all of them to get people in play and make sure that the school is safe. So, yeah, we're just at that time of our lives, I guess, where. It's important to have uh, police officers in the school. Yeah, it's pretty sick that we got to talk about active shooter stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's reality, unfortunately. And well, that's I've been saying. I've been saying this. It's not, and maybe you disagree. That's okay, but it's not a gun issue. I think in this country, clearly, there's a mental health issue. Yep. Across would, the board, if, would you, if you look, I would 100 percent agree with you. So. If you look at everything that's been going on. The last friggin' I don't know, five or six years really kind of ramped up, but uh, it it just seems like it kind of just taken a backseat mental health wise. Yeah, a number majority of the calls that we go on are going to be addiction issues or mental health issues. Mm-hmm. So it's it's definitely increased. Um, we're seeing a lot more issues in our jail for mental health um, problems. In fact, we've got a mental health coordinator that's assigned to the jail now because of how many people are coming in and our our staff, you know, they don't go to school to deal with mental health issues. Right. So when we have these individuals in our, our jail, if you don't understand kind of the, the core root of the problem and get them right medications, then we're using force against them all the time because, yeah. you know, they're trying to do things that our guys don't understand and and um, with their behaviors. And, and so having that mental health coordinator that we have now is really important in trying to get people evaluated and do they need to go up to the state hospital or you know and a lot of times if they do they get the help that they need get on the right medications they can actually function pretty normal yeah but it's a matter of getting them getting that diagnosis and getting them the right treatment did you see a rapid increase of mental health stuff since 2020 yeah yeah yep we've definitely seen an increase over the last couple years for sure imagine that right for sure yeah Yeah. no no doubt about it so i was i don't want to go back too far but i was going to bring up something that um I got some some firsthand knowledge on was that during the 2020 riot downtown that we had, there was actually um, one of your deputies from the jail that was on the other side going at the officers. I saw him on the front line. Even he was a black guy and he was he was arguing, yelling and cussing out cops on camera during the live stream of all the shit that was going on downtown. Yeah. And he was a deputy at the jail. Did he, get, did he get reprimanded or I don't know I don't know what, I don't know what happened to him but at our jail yeah 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 like you know the dude yeah yeah really I saw him on the front line and I go oh that dude's a fucking deputy at the fucking jail like for sure I know he was but yeah I, didn't, I was just curious if anything ever came of that because he was on the front line like literally in the cops faces when they had the barricade there downtown you know he was right yeah. there in the front yelling cussing as soon as they started like spraying and doing all that shit like i see him running and i think he even said like he got hit with something and he was like cussing out cops and i'm like this dude's one of them imagine you and come he's to on work. the front line on the other <laughs> side bro like <laughs> you yeah. got a mark on your arm and they're like what's that you're like nothing bro. Right. <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not familiar with who that person was but that's crazy I was so, curious, yeah. Yeah. I was wondering, uh <laughs> what's what's one of like the craziest or most funny excuses that you've gotten during like a just a regular traffic stop during like patrolling? 
Oh. I'd probably have to think about that one for a while. I don't know that I've really had anything unusual. This one was just like, I got to take a poo really bad. I was feeding. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dion wants to lighten it up big time right now. Yeah, I'm just curious. I haven't had anything really like that. I mean, obviously, I've had people upset when you stop them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, but even, I haven't even had that too many times, but I've had that a few times. Okay. Um, there's anything that sticks out in my mind. Uh, most of the people that I dealt with were, have always were pretty cordial. I mean, I was, my philosophy is, is if the person's respectful when I'm having a conversation with them or I'm trying to change behavior, they're respectful for, to me, I'm going to be respectful back. Right. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of times, um, that person knows that they made a mistake and, and, and they admit to it. Majority of the time I gave people, gave them a little bit of a, little bit of a break, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, if they were doing something wrong and, and they had another violation going on. I wasn't the person that usually gave them two tickets. Um, I give them a warning for the one and a citation for the other, as long as they were respectful. Mm-hmm. And they said, Hey, yeah, yeah, you know, I messed up. I was speeding and I apologize. And okay. Cause really, really to me, it's about changing behavior, right? Someone's out and keeping people safe. Yeah. So if someone's out doing something wrong and you have an interaction with them and they know it and, and that interaction is positive and they're going to make a change next time. That's, that's all we're really looking for. Yeah. yeah. Um, it could go down a different path. Sometimes you can <clears throat> pull someone over and give them four sites in one traffic stop. What's that going to do? Right. That's going to piss someone off and they're going to have that bad, um, idea about law enforcement when they leave. Yeah. And that one interaction that you have with someone could be the only interaction that that person's ever had with law enforcement. And it might be on, the only interaction that they have with law enforcement in the future. So, you know, I want that person to leave with a positive, um, perspective of what we're doing, a professional perspective mm-hmm. and go, Hey, you know what? That guy was, that guy was pretty cool. And all he really cared about was making sure that I was an Alger speeding and no one was going to get hurt. And you know what? I'm not going to do that next time. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's really what my philosophy was. And, that's how it should work. So, I like that, man. Yeah, for I, sure. We always talk about like all the hate that's out there for for law enforcement right now, and and I, I say it jokingly, um, but I'm serious about it. It's like, you know, I come from a, a, a rough background. Bro. I'm I'm from Southern California, born and raised mm-hmm. L.A., San Diego. Sure. And I hated cops growing up, yeah. and I say it all the time. Like I fucking hated cops, but I hated them because I was doing bad shit. Yeah. I was a criminal. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I when I was doing law, breaking the law is when I dislike cops. Now sure. that I'm running a a straight and arrow, mm-hmm. I, I got all kinds of cop friends and acquaintances and a yep. bunch of them training my gym and like, bro, I have no issues with them sure. and I don't see what people are trying to portray yep. in police. Yep. And that's it. That's good perspective. I mean, you'd be a great person to interact with some of the younger <laughs> people that maybe have that perspective now and say, Hey, this is where I was at one yeah. point in my life. And, yeah. Um, we're well, you guys interfered that, with me when I was stealing shit and breaking <laughs> the cars. Like, you yeah. know, how could I not hate a cop? Yeah, man? Like, maybe. there goes that asshole who's going to stop me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when, like, when I first got on patrol, um, I moved out. They had me live out in Page, which is a small community um, west of town, northwest of town, if you guys don't know where it is. And they hadn't had a, a, an officer out there for a long time, and I was stationed out there. And I told myself, you know, hey, this is going to go one of two ways. I'm going to either stop everyone out here because they're not used to seeing law enforcement. They're probably all speeding around out here. And they're going to run me out of town. Or, you know, I could have good positive interactions with them and, and try to meet people and, and move this thing in the right direction. And so yeah. what I did was I started a little little um, spreadsheet in my car. And when I stop people for the first time, I'd say, hey, I'm, I'm Jesse. I'm the new guy. I'm sure you've heard there's a new deputy living out here. That's me. Um, you're going to see me a lot more. So obviously you're speeding today. Um, nice to meet you. I'm going to give you a break today, but in the future, you know, next time I need you to keep it down because next time it's probably going to be a ticket and, uh, it's kind of your, your fair warning. And I think people really respected that because it was education before enforcement and yeah, that's people how you knew do it was out there. So yeah. do you guys um, have a quota you have to make for citations? Um, so what I do is I have, it's, I don't obviously call it a quota, but sure. what I have our guys do and I want them to make. 20 traffic contacts is what I call okay. it uh, a month. And that could be if they write a warning, a citation, it could be taking a vehicle crash. It could be helping uh, with a motor assist out on the highway. Right. Any of those constitute a, a contact. So it's not a pressure um, to bust people. Nope. No, I mean, <laughs> right. You yeah. of the month. You, you know what I mean? mean? Like they, they talk yeah. about the end yeah. of the month. Yeah. Like yeah. Everyone's oh, getting pulled over. Yeah. Again, yeah. yeah. for me, it's about changing behavior, right? Yeah, so I like that. You go out and write 20 warnings and, and no sites. 
I don't care. I don't, you know, it's, I, I, I believe that it's up to the officer to have that discretion on what they're going to do mm-hmm. yeah. because they know when they're having that interaction, what's going to work with, with interacting with that person and what's going to change their behavior. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not there. Yeah. So I think it would be not the greatest idea for me to sit behind my office, right. And say 20 sites, 20 right, citations, right. right. Because that might not have the best positive effect on someone. Now yeah. we get called to a complaint because there's a lot of speeding um, in an area and citizens are complaining about and saying, Hey, we need traffic enforcement out here because yeah. every morning, at 10 in the morning, I got people flying by my house at 50 miles an hour, and we're probably going to write sites, right? Yeah, yeah. Might do a little education first. Hey, we're going to be out here over the next couple of days, slow it down. But then, you know, we got to do some enforcement. Yeah. So hey, you build a rapport with the community first. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, and that's so. like growing up in the hood. I said, like any cops that we did get along with or that we were cordial with was the ones that did shit like that. They knew yeah, how to, they knew how to talk to people. They came in and communicated. Some of them grew up in the hood, you know, and they, and they were able to come back and they, they knew what was important though. You know what I mean? They weren't busting dudes for like dime bags and crazy. Yep. They, you know, they were looking for the big stuff and they were trying to build rapport with everyone within that. And they that knew by doing that, know? that, Hey, you know what? If I, this person trusts me, I get to know them. They're probably yeah. going to tell me, Hey, you get a little so more respect, know, man. Yeah. This guy over here is the guy that did the, you know, I don't agree with what he did. He did a robbery at gunpoint yeah. and hit a whole lady or some that, shit. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, hey, and you get better cooperation that way. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Have you guys been dealing with, um, a lot of, drug and human trafficking lately um well we're always i mean we can always build narcotics cases in the area unfortunately is, um, is fentanyl fentanyl is the big one one of the biggest things right now so obviously responsible for a lot of the the deaths that were overdose deaths that we're having what do you think about uh the military intervening um on down, the, on the on southern, southern border, border and then uh, even across the southern border like do you think um, that the uh, military should be stepping in and just decimate those guys? Well, I think that there's a lot of stuff coming over the south border. Um, yeah, I, you yeah. know, it's open right now. It's wide open. They and, bolted uh, the gates open. Yeah. yeah. So that. that that's an issue. And stuff's coming across. So we need to get it shut down. So whatever that would take to do that. I mean, there's people that are bringing across that are killing our citizens. And, yeah. You know, it's you got to get it stopped. We got uh, we got some guys that are well, one of our units actually just got back yesterday from from Wapaton, but um, they 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 we have military down there, but their hands are basically tied they're behind their back. Yeah, yeah. All they're there to do is just observe. I just talked to one today in the gym, which, which I think back. is and and that's you know as you know that's yeah. super frustrating. Yeah, because here you want to go down, you want to help, and then when you get down there, yeah. your your hands are tied. And the biggest thing for me in those types of situations is don't put people in safety positions then yeah you know yeah, you're down there you up. can't do much and now you're going to get hurt because of exactly. the restrictions that you right. have um and you can't do anything so i mean that's that's not good I'm, I'm 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 obviously like um after seeing everything with iraq and afghanistan i'm totally against uh any kind of war but um as far as cartel man i wish we would go there and fuck those guys up <laughs> and close down that border for good you know yeah. Yeah, they're. I mean, obviously, again, responsible for a lot of a lot of, this a lot of deaths, across and yeah. a lot of deaths. So we yeah. have a lot of um, cartel in North Dakota, don't we? Um, we've got ties. Yeah. To to back obviously to cartels. Yeah. I mean, and our guys that's are doing drugs? narcotics. Yeah, our guys that are doing narcotics investigations. A lot of the stuff is tracing back to that. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's crazy. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell a story when, like, I so one of the first times I came here was in in 1999 it was right after graduation and i had one of my homeboys had moved out here with like his his brother or his sister and his brother-in-law and uh so he was just like man i he he was a year behind me he's like just come visit you know check it out and so there's there's a really long story here but essentially i I was here for like eight months and and i met my daughter's mom and we were actually i was moving back to california and she was coming with me uh but before we left um i was at her parents house and uh, I, I went to actually meet her dad for the first time. And he's like a former Navy SEAL. And so this dude's cleaning all his guns on the table. <laughs> and my Mexican ass shows up, right? And trying to intimidate me. And I was just like, all right, bro, we got those too. But, <laughs> but anyway, he's like, let's go have let's go have something to eat. Let's go get a burger and a beer or something. We walked down around the corner from where he lived, which was, there was this place used to be where Walgreens is on 42nd called Grandma's or, or Mother's or something like that. It was like an old restaurant. Mm-hmm. And so we went there and we're eating, we're sitting at the bar, we got burgers and we're drinking a beer. And there's this guy and this girl across from us, a white lady and, and this Mexican guy. And they keep looking at us and 
like they're staring at us constantly and they're walking around the bar looking at us. They pretend they're on the fucking pay phone, like staring at us. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And finally the girl comes up to us and she's like, I know who you guys are. We're like, what are you talking about? She's like, you and him, you guys do not belong together. You're clearly fucking cops. And we're just like, no, we're just here having a burger and a beer. She's like, no, I'm not stupid. She's like, who sent you guys, Rodriguez? We're just like, what the fuck, lady? Go sit down. Like, you got us, you know, you got us figured wrong or whatever. And she's like, nah, I know what's going on. So she, went, <laughs> she sat down and we're just like, what the fuck is this all about? Uh-huh. And she kept staring at us, comes back over to the bar again. She's like, come on, guys. Like, seriously, did Garcia send you? And at this point, we had talked a little bit. And, and her, her, my my daughter's mom's dad at the time was just like, let's just play along and see what this is about. I'm like, all right, cool. So, <laughs> so <laughs> no she called, yeah, I swear to God, it's the truest story ever, bro. And she comes over and this is 1999. Keep in mind too. Right. Uh-huh. And she's like, she's like, look, I know we weren't supposed to leave the hotel, but we've been crammed up in the hotel for like two fucking weeks. We needed to get the fuck out. We just walked across the street. They're staying like at the Ramada when it was by the mall there. Uh-huh. And she's like, we just, you know, we just needed to get some different food. We've been eating fucking room service from the hotel. And like, <laughs> She's like, I know we're not supposed to leave. We'll go back and this and that. She's like, are you guys just here to keep an eye on us? And we're like, exactly. That's what we're here for, you know? And she's you know, just like, so, where are we guys yeah, yeah, she's like, so do you guys know, like, the whole fucking story? Like, she was just, she was like a, a meth head, too. So she's just, like, spilling the beans. Uh-huh. And she's, we're just like, nah, we don't get a lot of information. We're just here to keep an eye on things and make sure you guys are going to be okay. So it turns out, though, long story short, she was under protective custody because she had ratted on somebody from, from uh, Wapiton who was in the cartel. And was like one of the head guys and she was turning him in and she had a baby with him or some shit like that. And they took uh-huh. her baby away from her in order for her, her testimony. And she was going to work out a deal to get her kid back. But in the meantime, she was living in protective custody with this other dude sure. who, was, who was with her in a hotel down the street right here in fucking Fargo. And so, <laughs> so there she tells us this whole story and we're just laughing. We're just like, yeah, no, we, we get it. You know, and, you know, blah, we're playing the role. And she's just like, all right. She's like, well. Um, she's like, we're just, you know, we're just charging all of this stuff back to the room and whatnot. And then we'll just go back and we're like, all right, cool. And we're like, why don't you just tell them to put all our stuff on there too? We're going to go scope the parking <laughs> lot and make sure everything's cool. And then you guys come out and head walking back and we'll keep an eye on you from the distance. And she's like, oh, thank you guys so much. You know, I thought we were going to be in trouble and we did, bro. <laughs> we just like, <laughs> That's crazy. But, but I tripped out oh, because I'm like in 1999, shit. when I first came here, like I came from the gang life and there was no gangs here. There was no crime here, man. I remember like seeing the news. Someone stole a Snickers bar on the on the front cover of the paper. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, like this wow, place that, is like, man, that made yeah. the news. And then yeah. all of a sudden, there's someone hiding out from the cartel here, and I just tripped out, man. Wow. Yeah, that was a true ass story, though. That was such a weird time. Never heard that yeah, before. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. So it's here. It's been here for a long time. Is is Fargo, in your opinion, um, getting better as far as crime? Or well, I mean, obviously the Fargo. More head areas growing quickly. And yes. Growth, you're going to have more crime. Crime with, that comes with that. Um, but I, I still really feel that we live in a safe area. Obviously, it seems like our, our shootings have gone up a little bit. Um, but uh, majority of those are usually, not, not that it makes it okay, but people that know each other. It's not random acts of violence. Sure, sure, sure. Um, which is where we start getting into you know, some issues there. Um, but for the most part, I feel like it's still a pretty safe area, but obviously, like I told you, I mean, our jail's full. So, I mean, we've seen an increase in those being brought in. So, um, God, I can't remember when this was, but, uh, I got a, a question. Um, if our United States government came down and said, all firearms are banned, I want you to go to door to door and retrieve these firearms. (laughs) <laughs> not gonna happen yeah, yeah so that's I like what i like that. to hear i was so. thinking of, of asking a similar question too but about like covid that's going to be coming back around these days i don't think there's many people at least as far as i know as, as business owners go that are going to fucking play the game this time like yeah. people won't be closing their businesses down this time i know i won't no and i mean it the thing with that is is when when we had that go around the first time i mean you know, people asked us if we were going to go out and, and enforce that. And to be honest with you guys, we got, I, we're busy. I don't right. have time to go do that. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I, was I, I don't. I mean, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah it's, there's real stuff I to got, do with. You know, we got, we got stuff going on here that we, we need to do. So, um, yeah, it's, there were a lot of people. I mean, that was, that was hard on yeah, businesses, man. 
For so, sure. And it's coming back around. You know, They're the talking o- the about it. The only thing that yeah. responds something like that is if people get in a fight over it, right? And we're yeah. going to go and mediate the fight. Hey, we can't. You guys can't. You know, we don't want anyone to get hurt. I know Mike, but, uh, Mike Kane said that there was an old lady grandma called in about some kids playing basketball in, in the park, and he wanted to, them him to go bust them up for playing basketball. He's like, like, <laughs> when COVID was going on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just like, no. <laughs> that was that was oh, such a crazy time though. They went to the parks like when they first locked us down and like actually were like everybody needs to stay inside. They went and put caution tape on the park stuff, like on the slides and yeah. stuff to Where, block them off. Head? I was in Dilworth yeah, at the they, time. Bro, they they um like locked up uh, the nets too. They they made they, like it. zip tied them and or put locks on them yeah, or some shit so they were that's closed weird. and shit. It yeah, was it wild. Was, it was weird. The, the problem with all that stuff is that really bothered me yeah. is that the information that was coming out, the misinformation, and really, yeah. um, you know, scaring people with not giving them the full story on everything. Shit, yeah. even to this like day. Like what you were saying with uh, with the with the lady coming out and saying that. I mean, who knows where she was getting her information from, and yeah. who was trying to persuade her that it was so you know so bad or whatever. And that was really my whole issue with it is you just were hearing so many different stories. Yeah. And, you know. If this, then this, and this. Nothing they said about COVID has turned out to be true. It was all bullshit. Even, even to this day, it was all bullshit, including the vaccine. Yeah, I mean, the, we the misinformation to... coming from the the government resources and all that stuff were like, it was all bullshit. Did you see that new report? It said ninety nine percent of the COVID deaths ha- had underlying. Uh, yeah, conditions. medical conditions. Yeah, they, they, they say it was, it used to be 80% before yeah. we had real, yeah. you know, like information, but it was 80% yeah. of the people who, who died had a minimum of three and a half underlying conditions. Yeah. Um, and, and like 80% of, of those deaths were um, fear by psychosis, yeah. which was like the fear campaign that they were running. Mm-hmm. If someone got COVID because of the news and all that shit that they were doing all the time, making us fear it, those people is assumed they were going to fucking die and the placebo kicked in and those motherfuckers died. Yeah. It was fear of psychosis by way of psychosis. That's nuts, bro. That, and that's, those are statistical facts. You can go look up. It's, you know, CDC and, and who and all that are now posting all this stuff, which back then they were saying it was complete misinformation. It was lies. It was all this. And now they're putting these statistics on their sites and you can go look it up factually now. So it's crazy, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy to think it's coming back now. Well, like they, they're trying to tell us, hey, September, October, get ready, get the booster. Yeah, we're gonna do our best not to do lockdowns and mandates this time. If everyone can do their part, though, it's it's gonna be a little bit easier to make sure that doesn't happen. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, who's really gonna fall in line this time? Oh, we're, be, we're, we're too informed, a, and we have we've seen too much evidence. A, now. Gonna, there's gonna be a couple of them. Oh, you know, I've seen a couple of mask wearers already. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. I've, I've seen some people You've been compromised. Yeah, some out, people never stopped, stopped no. wearing them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. in the car by themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> before we close it down, man, I I, I want to touch on one last thing. Um, just kind of in in terms of what goes on in our regions, do we see um a lot of like what he brought up earlier, like human trafficking, particularly um with kids, pedophilia, stuff like that. Do you, you guys have a pretty big we, issue with that here? So um. Like we were talking about before, I mean, yeah. we've, we've been pretty proactive at our agency in trying to um, get someone assigned to our, our ICAC task force. And, and so we have someone up over there pretty much doing that full time. And ICAC stands for Internet Crimes Against Children. Okay. And that's where a lot of uh, learning is happening with children right now through social media yeah. and, and ways of that in that nature. And so, um, you know, unfortunately, we have gotten a lot of tips on it. And... Um, I don't think we're 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 not. It's not an epidemic here, but is there something going on? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but through working on the psychiatric task force, I mean, I think that we've gotten a pretty good handle on the different types of social media sites and stuff like that that people are using. Yeah. So, which is why I put someone on there because, as you guys know, I mean, some of these, some of the way that they do some of the stuff is, is pretty complex. Yeah, know? yeah. And if I don't have someone staying up on the technology piece and being able to inter- investigate it that way and, and intervene, it's tough for us to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 everywhere, and I know people always say, you know, it's always been this way, and now we're just more aware. But I don't think that's even the case. I think 
it's it's getting worse by a long shot, man. I you see, yes, it's always been here, but yeah, at the rate that it's going on now, and the people that are being exposed for it, you know the. To the degree of, you know, like, it's not just your sick neighbor or the dude who lives in the trailer right, park the anymore. Weird guy, yeah. No, it's politicians, it's government yeah. officials, it's teachers, it's, mm-hmm. you know, principals, it's, you know, I mean, you the church yeah, we, pastors and, and their wives. And, I mean, I've seen it all right here in this community, yeah. and it blows my fucking mind. Yeah, we've seen, obviously, seen some bad stuff with with uh, some of the school stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. middle school, yeah, prin- yeah. Yeah. Prin- yeah. Well, I think was- the hardest thing for me is just, you know that there's people trying to take advantage, like we talked about before, of um, younger children and some problems they might be facing. That's really yeah, a lot yeah. of times how this stuff starts. Yeah, is you know some some a young child having difficulty with something vulnerable. Yep, but being vulnerable with with whatever it is, and then that adult person picking up on that and using that to play and try to lure that person. Yeah. It's pretty sick. Yeah, it's disgusting. So, it, so yeah. Absolutely disgusting. Isn't uh, some states do chemical castrations for pedophiles? Chemical castrations, I haven't heard that. Really? So, <laughs> I think that's yeah, the thing. It's the same. Nope. You know what they use for chemical uh, castration? It's it's uh, lubrin or something like that. It's the same shit they're giving to children to, oh, uh, for, for, uh, to transition, to transition yeah. their gender. Yeah. It's, it's the exact same shit that they were using for um, chemical uh, castration, castration of like pedophiles in certain regions and stuff sure. here in America. And now that's the exact same drug that they're giving to kids who are trying to transition in some cases without their parents' consent yeah. because it's legal in certain states. That's a whole nother fucking that's podcast. Like, uh, someone else other than me on that one <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a whole nother place man but i got i got two questions go for it, go for it. um question one is is sheriff what you want to stay at or is there another office higher Good than, question. that you would want to move on to no I, i'm i'm i really like what i'm doing right now i say john um, I just, mayor though huh? yeah <laughs> i just started this term so my first year and yeah. my second term here so i've got three years here you know Right now, as I look ahead, I would like to do another another term, but we'll see. Um, you know, all things shake out, and um, but yeah, no, really, I, I really enjoy being able to serve the citizens of Cass County and working directly for them. Um, I don't, I'm not the type of person that wants to get involved in a bunch of you know, people point me in different directions and and things like that. It's really I want to serve serve our citizens and and really carry out the mission that they want their sheriff's office to carry out. So mm-hmm. I'm really happy with what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you want to stay away from the politics. For the yeah. Most part and I mean, right this here. job is a little bit political, obviously, sure. but it's not too much over the top. Right. Um, so some of the politics part of it is fine. Some of it, I don't care for, um, you know, the politics of meeting with people, visiting with them, seeing what they want from their office and, and working alongside them. That's, uh, that's great. That's awesome. Um, some of the other, more political stuff and people want certain agendas carried out. Um, that might be different than yeah. uh, what we stand for. No, I don't care for that. So. Yeah. Well, I think you would have our vote if you decided 100%. to. 100%. Yeah. In fact, you know, next time you have to run, I, I, I'm going to make sure that my companies get behind you and support. No, uh, I, pre- I appreciate that. For sure. So, yeah. yeah. Well, since you uh, came onto our podcast, <laughs> you're probably unaware, but I'm going to ask you anyway, uh, <laughs> what is your opinion of all of the UFO stuff that's been coming out? Yeah, it's yeah, been pretty yeah. crazy with that information. I mean, I don't, uh, do you, you know, do I've you, never do really paid attention okay. to it before. Yeah. Um, but now that some of the information is coming out, I mean, like many people, I think a lot of people didn't think it was real. Real. Yeah. Uh, but now there seems to be more evidence coming out. So it's kind of strange. I mean, I'd like to like to research it more, but that's the problem, right? We never get access to all the, all the, the information, information that's right. available. Yeah. So you're yeah. kind of sitting out here. Should you believe this person? Should you believe that person? But um, so now the government is, you know, declassifying a lot of information. Yeah, which so, is, but so again, you got to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you do. My question to um, you is: Do you believe there's a possibility that aliens are a real thing, or just I another more life form besides us? I, would say I think there's a possibility for anything. So you know, right. I know. Hey, got that's me a pretty broad answer. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that's, None that's, of your deputies uh, have ever uh, re- reported seeing anything that you know of. No, not really. Okay. I mean, 
Not to me specifically. Yeah. <laughs> it might have been all driving don't, around. Don't tell the someone. boss. He's going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Pull us. Yeah. <laughs> might have been all driving around and seeing something. I'm like, yeah, what's that? I don't know if I should talk about that or not. Yeah. 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 But, but also, I, get it. Yeah. I was wondering if you've ever heard of uh, this joke. So it's, it's a guy, he's driving, he's speeding, and uh, he gets pulled over. And and the the cop asked him, hey, why are you speeding? Like, you're going way too fast. And he said, well, my wife's been cheating on me with a cop, and I, I thought you were trying to, you were him trying to bring her back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was dumb. Never, 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 never. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We usually close better than that, John. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, so, it's been a pleasure to have you on, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you, uh, you touching no. on some of the topics that you touched on with us um, and just kind of giving us some insight and a whole other perspective than the kind of shit that we joke around and, and go off on in, on the show. So um, super appreciate it, man. Appreciate having you in the position that you're in. Uh, you're definitely one of the good guys, so I commend you for that, and, and I'm very thankful to have you in our community, um, not just our gym community, but just in general as as far as the, sure. the North Dakota, Cass County area goes. So Sure. I appreciate that. I appreciate that support and the, those those words, of course, and uh, it was definitely fun being on with you guys and chatting, and want to do it again sometime, let me know. Right on. We'll for make sure. that happen yeah. for sure. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check us out. We now are on Spotify, YouTube, uh Amazon Music, soon coming to Rumble. There you go. Uh, I got us signed up on there, so we'll be on there soon. But, yeah, talk your shit. Tell your friends about us. Don't tell your friends about us. Talk good, talk bad, no matter what you're doing, as long as you're talking about us. We are out. Mm -hmm.